Hello, this is Martin Barbu. Uh, I'm the composer behind the Game Chasers movie. And I just wanted to share with you a video where I talk about the process and show you the template and how I do this. Uh, for some people, this is a complete mystery. And they don't know how this works today. So it, it could be a fun video for you. So it's going to be quite basic. So for others, it could be, yeah, kind of boring uh, in, in old news, so to say, like how the process is working. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to start talk about the process actually. and it started at the pre-production phase. Uh, me and Bill were trying to find the, the sound. He had some ideas already of, of what kind of music he wanted to have. And it was an orchestral traditional film score. Mm, uh, basically like adventure movies from the 80s and 90s. Uh, and he also wanted to have that kind of Danny Elfman vibe that he has. Uh, so I true challenge challenge for, for sure for sure <laughs> and uh, but also at the same time very very fun this is like a, a dream project of mine first of all i get to write music that i really love and that i want to write and second of all i get to work with billy and the game chasers which i'm a long time fan of uh really really a, a dream project of mine uh, so in the pre-production phase uh we started to find that sound. I created a template uh, with all the instruments that I'm using. And the instruments are all digital, basically. I can also, I could, of course, record a real instrument as well. But since we want an orchestral soundtrack and we don't have an orchestra to work with, because that's really expensive and need, takes a lot of resources and a lot of skill that I don't have, uh, well, we have to go digital. Uh, and so basically, Computers uh, have a very, they can be a very advanced synthesizers. You all know the, the kind of synthesizers uh, that you've seen and they have different sounds like pianos and they have strings and brass and saxophones and whatever you can imagine. But those standalone synthesizers that are just one machine are kind of limited to the amount of space they have, like disk space uh, and also uh, process power. Uh, but using a computer for this, you can get some really, really cool stuff. Uh, so I'm going to switch here so you can see uh, my program here that I use. It's called Cubase uh, and it's a DAW or D-A-W uh, as they call them. It's a digital audio workstation. Um, and this is where we write the music. And you see a bunch of different tracks here and you might recognize the, the names that they are named after different instruments. Uh, so if I want to have a flute, I select this little track and I play. Uh, and I can play the flute on, on the keyboard. I can see but I have a keyboard right here. Uh, so yeah, this is my setup. I have a small keyboard here for just uh, have fast access to it and can switch between the keyboard and mouse and go to the keyboard and play something. And then I also have my this uh, large keyboard here, which is a, a full range 88 keys with weighted uh, keys. If It's nice if you want to play a, a piano part or something, uh, but most often this one works. This is more of a, a traditional synthesizer uh, keyboard, uh, which is fast and works great. Um, so all these instruments you see here on the screen, uh, I created when I created the template. We decided on, what instruments should there be? Uh, and the most important part is the orchestra. So it's, we have the string sections, uh, we have the woodwind section and the brass section, and then uh, the percussion and the keys. So pianos and, and all the percussion you can imagine, the huge bass drum and the snares and the cymbals and, and all that um, are in here. Uh, and then I have some other instruments, some that I'm going to use and some that we probably not are going to use, but uh, I have some 80s vibe instruments that could be really cool um, to use sometimes. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, it could be like a pad or something. Uh, but I also have an instrument that I use a lot called the uh, Onde Martineau. Uh, it's French. I don't know how to pronounce it really, but it's it's uh, you are familiar with the Thurman. very similar it's based on the same technology but uh, it works totally different 
then from the theremin. Uh, there were two different guys uh, inventing it, uh, inventing their instruments at the same time at different parts, like using the same components that for, was from like a, a radio technology, I guess. Yeah. So they created different kinds of instruments. The theremin guy, I guess it's called theremin, uh, built that one with a magical moving your hands and creating the, the tone and, the, and the, all that. Well, the other guy who called, um, I guess it's called Martineau, I guess uh, it's a French version of Martin, I guess, uh, created this. That it, it has a, th I think the first version had a keyboard layout, but you couldn't press the keys. They were just there for reference because what you do is moving a, like a, a band. And if you move it from like low to high, it's like this. But it's completely analog and no steps at all. Uh, so you move this band over the keys so you, you knew that okay if i stay over here it's a c and if i stay over here it's an a and so on uh, it's a really cool instrument and it was used in the in the ghostbusters soundtrack by elmer, Ber elmer bernstein uh and i'm a great fan of that soundtrack and i wanted to try it out and i found a great free plugin actually uh for i think it was for reactor yeah uh but if you get this please donate because this is awesome it has a bunch of different settings and it's, it's awesome to use for like, of course, obvious spooky, scary situations, but also really nice to dub with the choirs or string melodies uh, because it adds some kind of flavor to it. it. Because it has kind of this voice kind of feeling to it. Really cool. So I use this a lot uh, uh, in different situations for the soundtrack. But, but then, yeah, the orchestra itself, uh, how does it work? Uh, so it's divided into the different sections where the first violins, the second violins, uh, the viola, the cello, and the basses. And you also have a couple of ensemble patches down here, what we're going to go through. Uh, and as you see, there's just not one violin, it's, it's a bunch of different versions here. Uh, so on top here is a solo violin. So nice. Uh, it's really hard to have a, a synthesized violin sound realistic. So I, mo I don't never use this by itself. I use this together with the the, the whole first violin section. So this is the legato uh, uh, articulation. So it's, it's for melodies. So I can take I can take chords with this, but it's really nice playing the transition notes between uh, when changing notes. So it's really nice. And I can also control the dynamic of it. Uh, so I have a mod wheel over here. Uh, you can see it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> to back up here, you can see I have a, a wheel that I can move here. So if I have it at the bottom, like this, it's very soft. But if I rise it, it gets more intense. And I can really change the dynamic of it. Really nice, uh, and then uh, so that's one place that the violin can do. It's it's the legato, the playing the melodies. Then you have the short notes called the spizzicato or, uh, or marcato, different kinds of, of, of shorts. It's it's for like them. So it's uh, really cool. So depending on what you want the violins to do, you have to switch between these different articulations, and the next one you're for sure recognize it's the pizzicato and that's when you pluck the string so it's it's used a lot like Danny Elfman uses it a lot in his music and it, I guess most of them do um, composers uh, and next we have the tremolo so it's it's like you don't just uh, drag the bow in one motion you actually are sizzling and moving it uh, to make some tension. It sounds like this. So you can hear it. And of course, I can control the dynamics here as well. Really cool. Uh, and then we have some trills that are really nice to have. So these are minor third trills. So, uh, of course, you could use the legato and play like... But it doesn't sound that natural. So, 
with the done that they actually recorded the players doing this motion. So it sounds very realistic and, and cool, and also has the dynamic controls. So depending on what you want the instruments to do, just switch between these uh, different articulations. And these are just a few. There are a bunch of them that you can use. Um, so that's really, really cool. So what I'm using here is, is a library from Spitfire. Uh, I really like their, their uh, strings. And I also use them for the woodwinds and the brass as well. Uh, then I use uh, some different for the percussion, percussion and the keys. I use a variation of Spitfire and um, also native instruments. Uh, they're complete series. I think it was complete eight. So they're a bit dated, but I think they work really well still. Um, and uh, then I have the choir from from uh, Metropolis Arc by Orchestral Tools. And these are amazing. I really love these uh, choirs. Let's see if I can get it to sound. Oh, I think I have to, uh, it's, it was muted. So let's, let me try, just get this up like this. And now, yeah, okay. so these are, so these are female voices uh, mixed with uh, a children's choir and that's, Really cool to use, uh, especially if you want that Danny Elfman vibe. You really want to have some children's choir for sure. Um, and also, uh, I think that one is from another library. I think it's from uh, one of the Berlin inspired libraries. Uh, but then we have, uh, this, these are from the, the Metropolis Arc 1, and this is the Victorian. Uh, oh, same thing there. I have it muted. Uh, but female choir with a lot of vibrato so it's really powerful uh, and uh, I also have to show you the the male choir oops that's still the female uh, there we go just going to switch like this tenors Awesome. And uh, I can also switch articulations for the choir. So these are just playing melodies. Uh, I, as you can hear. Uh, but we can also switch this out for shorter notes. And as you can hear, they also sing uh, le uh, like uh, vowels. Really cool. Uh, they are in, in different lengths I think I have she some shorter ones some longer ones uh, that, that also ends with Mets. a letter at the end very cool I think it, these are the short and all uh, the female choir also had these different articulations so they're really good for like faking a choir uh, if you, you would use them all by themselves alone it will kind of quickly sound like synthesized uh, choirs uh, because it's so hard to get these uh, realistic and it, it isn't that it, they are based on samples so they of course sound realistic but if you like repeat a note several times you start to notice that it's the same recording being repeated over and over again uh, so kind of fast the ear picks up on these small details uh, but if you use them in like a full arrangements uh, it, it really blends in really well um, so th those are really cool um so what to show you next one very important thing uh during the process was also to have find a, a good mix that i was happy with uh and i worked with this for a long time and like rerouted all the, the audio through these different buses and all this uh and uh, also have some 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 uh, effects of course uh the reverb is really important uh, and i found a setup that i thought was okay uh, at first uh but then i got some help help from my friend uh, and uh, co-worker and my mentor basically uh, called Christoph Reng who is uh, an awesome composer uh, and I'm so glad that I know him and he's taught me a lot and he told me about this kind of reverb it's it's based on an old um, uh, hardware like from the 80s it's called uh, the lexicon I think uh, 
so he advised me to to try this out uh, and use it in the mix, and it made a world of difference. It it uh, yeah, it made everything mo feel more uh, united and like it's part of the actually being played in the same room, and it, that's an important part to make it sound realistic. So these different instruments are recorded at different places. Some are in in England in in one room, and some in Germany in one room, and uh, all around the place. So they are played in different environments. So you need this last reverbs to really make them blend together. Uh, and it, I think this setup works really well. Um, and it, it also, Christopher also helped me a lot uh, with the process. I've been sending some uh, early versions to him and get some feedback. And uh, yes, I had a great uh, input there. So really valuable person to have. Uh, and also these instruments, uh, I have access to them thanks to the company I work for together with him called Elia Software. Uh, so it's thanks to this that I have access to these awesome, awesome sounds. Uh, okay, so a bit about the process. So this is the software that, that I use. And as you see, this is a timeline. So uh, if, if, if you write something very simple, this uh, it's added to this timeline and if I play from the start it will even play this and you can see this seconds tick in here and you can see the bars uh, that it's currently playing uh, so this is how you write the music uh, of course you can also like record with a microphone and record uh, a track that way but I'm using mostly this way this these kind of uh, digital instruments synthesizer way uh, so what you see here are are MIDI tracks and MIDI is an old system that, that saves uh, the input from a keyboard. So we can see what I played here represented by these lines and dots. So as, as, this, uh, as you play, this one will start to move. And when it reaches something, it will trigger these notes. It's, it's very, very simple, but super effective, of course. So this is basically how it works. Uh, so what's nice about this, if, if I play something wrong, well then I can I can move a note and I can move it where I want it to and make it shorter or make it a bit softer uh, while others can be stronger. Uh, so it's this is basically how you work with uh, MIDI uh, in a computer or in a DAW actually. Um, so this is how it works. I have a, this timeline where, where I, everything I play is recorded. So when I get the footage from Billy, I add that video to this project. So up here, I will add the video. And if I press play here, I would see it uh, on, on the screen above me I have here. Uh, so I can see what's happening in the scene and I can compose right to it. So the first thing I then do, let's, I don't have, can't show you a video here, uh, but let's imagine that there is a video here. Um, so I have this track which is used for uh, writing comments. So for example, if we, I get some direction from Bill, okay, I want the music to start here. Okay, then I go to that point and I set a marker like, like this, oops, wrong track. Uh, start music here. Okay, then I know this. Okay, this is where, so, so when I get here, the music should start. So this is where I, I start writing the music. Uh, but I don't start right there. Uh, I keep going through the scene and I make small comments for myself or if Billy has other specific direction, like bring up the music here, or stop the music here or make it more intense, make it scary, make it happy or whatever it can be. Uh, I, I make all those notes in here. But I also for myself, like uh, I feel like, okay, here I want to have Billy's theme playing. Uh, and uh, as we move forward, I want to bring uh, the second character's theme in here, uh, or perhaps mix them two. So this is a way to to, to tag them the 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 clips uh, or, or tag this scene with some notation, which 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 is great to have when you write the music and know where where it starts and stops. Um, so when I have all the markers out on the scene, that these are the things that I want to comment, or or these are the things uh, I want to happen musically um, well then I start to think about a tempo so uh, for that I have a, a tempo a 
track. So if I start the metronome and if we press play, uh, you can hear this click. Uh, so now it's in 120 BPM and it's kind of the default value. So, but say that this is uh, going to be a slow scene, it's going not going much going to happen. Uh, well, then we can add, let, like say when the music should start. Okay, then I want the tempo to be 85 BPM. Uh, so like this. Uh, yeah, and there, there should the music start. So at this point, it goes to 80 BPM. And I also start to imagine what kind of music I want to have, like if I want to use some people's themes or uh, something else. Uh, then I also have to de design, decide on the time signature. If it's a, it's a three by four, like a waltz, uh, waltz uh, kind of rhythm, or if it's four by four, which is the more traditional, which you hear here. So the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you know. Uh, so decide on that. Uh, and that depends on what the, the underlying music you want want to be. Um, so when I got this structure that I've imagined, I then start composing. And so uh, when the music comes in, I know I want this theme to be played. So I start recording here. Very nice melody. Uh, so I recorded this and, uh, and then I, Perhaps I readjust it a bit, uh, uh, like all oh, the time was a bit off, uh, and oh, this was the wrong note, and I can change that. So uh, it's it's a bit of cheating. You don't have to play correctly. You can always fix things later, but that's a huge time saver. And sometimes I even not, I don't play the keyboard. I can actually draw in the notes like this, and then also draw in the dynamics if I wanted to to go down here be soft and then go up at the end. I can just draw it in like this. Like that. Uh, but of course I can record that as well in real time uh, by using that, this mod wheel as I showed you. Um, so that's basically how it works. And then the, the tempo and the time signatures kind of change when I start writing the music because I feel that it's going to a direction uh, where it maybe needs to be faster or, or slower, or if, if it should change into another time signature. So it's a process of, of, of uh, while writing that it changes, but it really helps for me to get that, that basic structure there at first. So I know I have something to work against. Um, uh, but of course you work against the, the picture, of course, but to have those notes and kind of uh, writing down the ideas, it really helps the process a lot. Um, so yeah, that's basically the process. So, but, but let's run through some more instruments. So this was the first violins you heard. You have the second violins. And they have the same instrument. Uh, so they have the same styles and they, and they can play the same things. But you can hear that it sounds differently. That's because if you imagine an orchestra, you have the first violins to the left, if you're w watching the scene. Then you have the second violins next to them. So you can hear their placement is a bit different. And there might always be a, it could also be a, a different in size of the section. So it could be uh, a, a different sound because of that as well. But basically you separate these two because they, you want them to play different things. Uh, I imagine the, the string section to be five different voices, basically. So you have the first violins, uh, the second, the violas, and it's a bit lower. They look like a violin, but they're a bit larger and they can go lower. And then we have the celli, of course. Um, and the basses. Uh, so I imagine each of these sections having one voice each. So I, if I have a, a melody in this one, uh, I can make a counter melody in this one, but I never, I actually rarely have the, the one section playing two notes at the same time. Like if I have a spizzicato here, for example, I never use two at the same time because you, then I would split it up. So the first violin plays this part and the second violins 
play this part uh, to have a more natural sound because this is basically how it works you can of course split up a section so it different place within the section plays different things uh, but I like to keep it this way because it's it sounds more natural and more realistic to me so I try to stick this closely uh, but I do have some ensemble patches so for example I have the major trills uh, so here I have from the basses up to the violin so I have the whole section uh, in one uh, in one uh, patch or one loaded instrument so here I could actually play with some chords but still like I want to keep track of the number of voices being voices being played at the same time uh, to still keep it realistic uh, and I also have some other ensemble uh, articulations the I could have loaded these for the ones individually as well uh, but then it would demand more power from my computer and it's already struggling so I had to use some ensembles for some articulations like the flutando you have this muted sound you use the mutes on the, on the strings which is makes it very soft and nice and well the har har harmonics so you have these overtones uh, that, that you can get um, some Bartok pizzicato so that you're actually hitting the, the string like the pizzicato you pluck the string but in this case you flip the uh, the bow and you hit it with the back end of it or it could like use a pen or something uh, if you don't want to uh, uh, destroy your bow uh, yeah, and I have a, like an alternative staccato for longer, shorter notes, uh, basically. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I have some string runs if you want to have some. Let's see, uh, I have this. No. Now this is a very slow tempo. I'm just going to raise it so it sounds a bit better. Like. So they're they're recorded an actual string run happening so i if i need something like this uh, something like that i can use that instead of like playing a fast run on the legato like like yeah. because it having it actually recorded sounds better than playing it because it's yeah because of many reasons basically uh so sometimes you want to use these pre-recorded longer things and so this is in major scale so I can change it to be a minor scale or whatever it needs to be basically um, let, let's go on to the woodwinds so these are the piccolo and it's the, the, the tiny flute and it also has the long notes and the short notes uh, flute Uh, yeah, the staccato. And we have an alt flute, so a bit lower. Warm, nice sound. Uh, the clarinet. Awesome. Uh, yeah, very nice. Uh, and the oboe. Which I haven't used at all yet in this movie i think it, i had nev never find the place for it so far but perhaps we will find some place when, when we do and the bassoon i use this quite a lot it's warm and very woody sound of course it's woody because it's a woodwind but it's it's very nice and the contra bassoon it can go lower uh, nice and this is an instrument that i used a lot because the the instrument I use I love how it sounds. It's the bass clarinet. It it sounds so beautiful, like when you go from one note to the to the other. You can hear like the, the clefs on on it moving uh, and 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 um, making the small sounds. I use this a lot because it's so great for melodies because it sounds so good uh, and also I have a, a contra ba bass clarinet go really low super low <laughs> I think this is the lowest note I have possible in, in this uh, orchestral setup um, and then the brass we have the trumpets and the horn 
horns. French horns. The trombones. It's a used a slot, and they have some different articulations. You also have the trills for the horns. It's great to add some tension as well. Uh, and the trombone has some rips. Great for a comedic effect, which is, well, something kind of common in this movie. So this is a good one. So it, it actually, you, the trombonist is playing the note and at the same time dragging, this, uh, dragging the, the thing that they drag. I don't know what they're called. So, it's really awesome. So we have some bass trombones, uh, simbasso, very, very cool. And then the tuba. I love the tuba. I use this a lot. Uh, it's a very important instrument for a specific ca character that you will see in the end. Um, and then the, the actual uh, uh, percussion and keys, a bunch of bass drums, uh, some glockenspiel and vibraphone, xylophone, marimba, always some bongos and some congas and uh, some piano, of course. Um, and I have like, three different pianos depending on the situation. This, this is a, a different sound, basically, and I have the for short sounds fast short piano notes I use this one uh, it's good for drama as well and a harp and a drum kit and tambourine and things like that uh, but I also use a snare here uh, not this one this is also a good snare but this one uh, and this is a snare that we made ourselves at Elias actually uh, and it's I love it and I think it's actually me playing this recording so it's very nice to have and it also has a bunch of different articulations so it has the, the right uh, right stick and the left stick uh, just hitting uh, you have some uh, drum let it um, you drop the the stick on it and it like it's nice to like to end a, a phrase with it so nice rim shot uh, slam just flam flam. Just click and the. And this can also be con dynamically controlled with the. Yeah. Uh, so this is like the what I use to create this music basically. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, it's a super fun process. You really have to use this fun box. Uh, that you can just pick things from and play around with. Like this instrument, I, I love it. Uh, it's great. And I have uh, like a music box. Uh, so it has a lot of, of different things uh, inside with a lot of focus on the orchestral um, instruments. Uh, so with that said, I don't think I have nothing more to add right now. I hope that you like this video and uh, if you have any questions, just ask me wherever and I will answer them as fast as I can. So with that said, take care and goodbye.